This video is intended to show you how you can use the PF command to find p-values or probabilities from F distributions using our software R or R Studio, and then also do a single factor ANOVA analysis, including the single factor ANOVA F test and a Tukey's HSD multiple comparisons procedure. So the first thing we want to do is want to find how we can find a p-value from an f distribution. Well first of all if we just use the command pf this is the cumulative probability from an f distribution where we're going to look at the area that falls below 6.56 from an F distribution with 3 and 15 degrees of freedom. So that's how this is this function PF is set up, where 3 is the numerator degrees of freedom, 15 is the denominator degrees of freedom, and we can then find the area that falls below this value in that distribution. We can just highlight this section and run it. We'll find that the area that falls below 6.56 in this distribution is 0.99. 52552. Five, five, However, when we want to find a p-value, we always want to find the area that falls above our f-test statistic. So suppose, let's just uh, keep it as it is. So suppose we get an f-test statistic of 6.56. This will mean that this was our test statistic. We want to find the area that falls above this from an f distribution on 3 and 15 degrees of freedom and we can do that by subtracting this from 1. Instead of finding all the area that falls below our curve, we want to find the area that is above it. So we want to subtract that from 1 and we get then a p-value or probability or area that falls above 6.56 to be 0 0.0 zero four seven four four seven seven five alright so super small p-value alright so we could also just change this up and uh, let's say we got a test statistic instead of three point seven eight and our numerator degrees of freedom were four and our denominator degrees of freedom were ten we could then just run this line again and find a different p-value according to a different test statistic and different degrees of freedom so that is how the function pf works that's basically if you already have a test statistic and the degrees of freedom then you can find a p-value easily using that command. Also, it's more common that you'll probably just have data that you want to run in and do an entire single factor ANOVA test and be able to get the F test and p-value from your software. So if you want to run in data just through a vector, you could do it like this. So suppose we have a quantitative variable called carbon we can run in the quantitative variable, and I only have it set up like this, the vector set up like this, just so you can see it on the entire, uh, in the entire window. So you can run this, that is then our quantitative vector, it comes up over here, it says numerical, we have 20 observations. All right, over here then what I wanna do is, I wanna set up just a factor. So in this example, I have four factors, 300 degrees, 400 degrees, 500 degrees, and 600 degrees, and then these are my quantitative measurements for each one of those. Well, the first five observations are from 300 degrees, that factor level. The second five are from 400 degrees, the third five are from 500 degrees, and the fourth or the last five observations are from 600 degrees. So I can set up this factor with a little quick notation where I use this command repeat. So I'm gonna repeat this 300 word factor uh, five times. Then I'm gonna combine that with repeating 400 five times and so on. So then I can easily just write in this. And this is basically just the, the notation that this needs to be in, your, your data needs to be in this format in order for this AOV command to work. So once we've set up our data, we can look over here, we have our data set temp dot factor, and we can see this is a character, so see how it says CHR, this is different than numerical, and it has 20 observations as well. If we were wanting to look at this a little bit more, we could slide this over and see what that looks like, the first starting values. We could also just highlight temp.factor and see what that looks like. So it looks like something like this. All right, so the next step is for us to do the single factor ANOVA and get our ANOVA table. And if we just run AOV this command, it doesn't give us a nice ANOVA table. Instead, it basically just gives us the sums of squares and degrees of freedom. So this is okay, but really what we'd like is an ANOVA table. So instead, if we call it something and take the summary of that, I've just called it mod, 
then we'll get a nicer table. So here then we get the ANOVA table that we're more used to. R doesn't give a total row, but that's okay because the total row can just be created from the previous rows from the factors and then the error row. So we can see from this example that we have an F test statistic of 12.1, that's relatively large, for a, an F distribution on 3 and 16 degrees of freedom, our p-value is 0.000219. If we want to just verify that up here using this command, we could essentially just put 12.1 into this function, put in 3 and 16 degrees of freedom, just showing you that this will work this way too and run this, we'll get the same p-value. Sure enough, this is the exact same value as up here. So that's pretty great. All right, we can see that we have our mean squares for our factors, our treatments, and our mean squared error for our error. So we get the ANOVA table using the AOV command, calling it something, and then using the summary command gives the nice table. Now if we want to do a multiple comparisons procedure, basically comparing multiple means all simultaneously, we can do this Tukey HSD command. Because we've called the AOV factor up here as mod, we're going to use that here in the Tukey HSD command, and we're going to define a confidence level. Here I've defined it to just be 95%. You can define this as 90, 99, or whatever you need it to be, and you can run this section. This will then give the difference for the different factor levels, so the average difference, the lower bound for the 95% family-wise confidence level, and the upper bound for that same confidence level, the family-wise, that upper value for the difference in the means between the 400 degree factor and the 300 degree factor, and then it will give a p-value comparing whether or not those two means are significantly different from each other. This is also adjusted, so you can essentially just compare it to your alpha level. So in this case, because I'm using a 95% family-wise confidence level, I would have then a 5% significance level for a family-wise hypothesis test. So we can just compare these straight to 0.05, see whether or not they're significant. We can see that a few of them are, this one's really close, but not quite, and the rest of them this one is and this one is not. So that's how we can do a Tukey's multiple comparison procedure and a single factor ANOVA using R or R Studio.